Looking for a place for the whole family? Come down to the Toucan Mall in Amelia's Ward, Linden. It's the mall that has it all. We have great food, a relaxing atmosphere, and activities for all ages. Tennis, swimming, and a playground. But the fun doesn't stop after dark. There's even a bar and an arcade. And if you aren't ready to go home yet, we've even got a spacious room for your comfort, complete with air conditioning, Wi-Fi, and a private bathroom. The Toucan Mall can also facilitate your events in our spacious conference hall. We also have a theater with films for the entire family. It's the Toucan Mall located in Amelia's Ward, Linden. All right, my friends, a very good evening to you and welcome to our program once again. This is uh, Dr. Joe Seth Haynes, <laughs> if you don't know, as if you don't know. Um, this program has been on since uh, 1996 and we've been on a couple of television stations, but we've been here and we're still here trying to advise you, to help you, to guide you, those of you who are interested in longevity and disease prevention. Uh, it's the 29th of September, and <clears throat> I normally don't mention the date, but I, I mentioned it today because the month is finished. You know, the next the next three months, the year is done, right? And um, we've had some challenging times, you know, in the past couple of years. We've lost a lot of persons, some family members, some friends, you know. Um, but some of you who are still around are still here. You're still here. And, you know, there's hope for all of us who are still here. And some of us just have to follow rules. Some of us don't like to follow rules. Some of us like to uh, do what we do all the time, hoping that they will help us to get better. But it doesn't work like that. So today I have... Um, a live program with Dr. Peter Glidden, who's an MD. He's been in practice for many years, I think it's over 20 years. I've been in practice over 29 years, my friends. Believe it or not, I've been in practice over 29 years. And it's time for me to retire, pretty much. <laughs> you know, one more year, I think, and I want to retire. I think that's, I think 30 years is good enough service to humankind so I can enjoy life a little bit because I've been with you all the time, helping you, guiding you, saving you from all sorts of things, uh, starting families, you know, all sorts of things. But we're going to have Dr. Glidden in a conversation with another doctor. And it's very, very, very interesting. It's about disease prevention, uh, helping yourself to heal yourself. Things that I've been teaching you basically, but it's coming from another expert, and um, you will learn much more about you learn more about our type of practice and why we are here to stay and why you should listen to us. We're not saying that uh, every, everyone else is wrong, but some of you are hard nosed. But you learn either from the grave or from the sick bed that what we've been teaching you is what you need to know and what you need to follow. And um, sometimes it's too late for some of you. But um, next week, I would like to have with me, I'm planning it, two other doctors. Uh, one, two of them are both MDs. They are, you know, the other practice which you know, I'm not, I'm an, I'm an ND, they are MDs. And both of them are also um, in natural practice now because they believe that this is the right thing to do. And we plan to have a conversation with them next week live uh, on Skype. I will probably be maybe in the studio, hopefully, but they will be on Skype. And um, we plan to talk about uh, cardiovascular health or health, health and health, you know, and a, a few other things, but pretty much heart attacks and uh, strokes and, you know, hypertension, things that are affecting our society in a very bad way, because a lot of people are falling out with, uh, with stroke and heart attack and, um, you know, things that can be prevented, okay? So join us next week also for some very important information that can probably help you to save yourself or to save someone else. Um, today's information is very crucial in you understanding 
why it is so important to follow us. Um, we, we try to guide you in the right way. You must understand that disease is not normal. You must also understand that the body has to heal itself. No one can heal you. Only God can do that to Jesus Christ. The body has to heal itself. And you need to understand some basic philosophies about healing. You know, what it takes to help the body to heal itself. Okay? So, I'm going to sign off now. And I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Blidden in his interview so that you can be aware of what is important and why you should listen to us. Not that you shouldn't listen to anyone else, but why you should listen to us and do what is necessary to help you to be healed. So until I see you again, um, I'm going to turn you over now to Dr. Blidden. So stay tuned. I mean, honest to God, for mm -hmm. most of the conditions that most people go to the doctor for, it's not health care. It's right. disease management. You get right. more dependent on the drugs over time. You get weaker, and then the last 10, 15 years of your life, it's a revolving door to the emergency room. It's horrible. Well, thank you, and good evening. And uh, I'm Dr. Lee Merritt again, your host at the Medical Rebel Podcast. And... Tonight, I have a very nice, interesting guest to bring on, Dr. Peter Glidden. You know, I'm a classically trained physician. I, I spent many years in what I consider now kind of flat earth medicine. But one of the things I've learned over my lifetime, and especially more recently, is how we've been wrong about so many things and how real medicine has been hidden from us. And, and for example, I, uh, I have a bunch of friends who are chiropractors, and I said to them the other night, I said, you know, I used to feel bad because you guys couldn't prescribe pharmaceutical agents. And now I feel like that's been your big plus because you've learned to do the right thing where we should have gone in medicine about looking at causes and diet and, and the basics of human physiology. And we become, we really have become pill pushers in so many ways, not that there aren't some good pharmaceuticals, but it's not the end of the world. So I'm really honored tonight to have Dr. Peter Glidden here and, um, I wanted to let me start by asking you, Dr. Glidden, about your background and and you're a naturopathic physician. So yeah, so thanks, I appreciate it. It's, yes, so and let's be honest. So I am a licensed naturopathic physician. The initials after my name are ND. And however, because of just what you were saying, um, there's been a medical monopoly in place in this country since 1912. And because of the medical monopoly that everybody has grown up inside of, people don't even know how to pronounce naturopathy, let alone know what the training of a naturopathic <laughs> doctor is, or even have any idea whatsoever about what we do therapeutically. And of course, I would say this being a naturopathic doctor, but I believe that it's true based on my clinical experience. Naturopathic medicine is it's the best kept secret in the 21st century. Well, I, I, I think that's right. And, you know, um, well, I, there are a couple of things that I wanted to ask you about, and then I wanted to, and then I want you to explore kind of the things you think are the most important and some of the things that, uh, that I want to incorporate. We've talked about this, about, um, you know, I've been, I have a little shop and I've been, I've been interested in providing, I started out simply having vitamin D in my office as an orthopedic surgeon. And I realized that wasn't enough. So then I added vitamin K and then I added enough things. And then pretty soon this thing broke out. And so what I'm finding is that people need to get things that really make a difference. And I didn't tell you this, but I'm also doing a, um, I'm, I'm putting together a seminar that I'm, it's going to be a six part, at least six hour, probably more seminar that on how to be so healthy, essentially, you don't need a doctor, you know, survive and thrive now and in the future. So um, I think all we're going to talk about is going to feed into all this beautifully. So but a couple of questions I wanted to ask you is about the, you know, you're thinking about water, which is the basis, I think, of good health is we have to have good water and how what, you know, you hear a lot of stuff about acidifying or not a, a, a putting a base in your water like, you um, you know, uh, what am I thinking of the just a, a, a quarter teaspoon of uh, sodium bicarb, 
Um, right. And then we hear about low deuterium water. And I wonder if we could start there and then move on to the things you think are really important that we incorporate in our health program. Well, water, of course, you know, the body's 90 something, 98% maybe made of water. It's very important. And the water quality is super important. Uh, early on in my career, I've been doing this for 33 years now. <clears throat> I worked with a diagnostic laboratory in St. Charles, Illinois. And they were one of the first laboratories in the United States to do very high quality specific water testing, right? Way much more than, than your municipal government, you know, is required to do by law. And when I started testing the water that my patients were drinking, it, I, I mean, it was, it was horrifying, the stuff that was found in the water. And of course, it infiltrates into the system and creates all any number of net negative physiological <clears throat> uh, occurrences. So having clean water is really important. There was a really interesting study. I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer to, to understand that, you know, it's, it's, it's a really good idea if the water that you're drinking doesn't have pharmaceutical residue in it. It's a really good idea that the water that you're drinking doesn't have excessive amounts of iron in it, right? It's a really good idea that the water that you're drinking doesn't have dry cleaning chemicals in it, right? And so forth and so on, as far as the pollutants go. <clears throat> but there's a nutritive aspect to the whole water thing which is even more important. It was a fascinating study that a colleague of mine was involved with years ago. Um, they looked at the water supply in two different counties in Indiana. And in one of the counties, there was a statistically significant increase in depression. The diagnosis mm -hmm. of depression and the prescription of antidepressants, it was very high in this particular county. And right next door, there was another county, was hardly any depression at all. Hmm. And so somebody got it into their mind to take a look at the water. So they looked at the water. And lo and behold, what they found was that in the county where the residents were never depressed, or at least that wasn't a big thing for them, there were significant levels of lithium. Yeah, I knew that was going to be a lithium and there was none in the water supply of the people who were, uh, you know, depressed all of the time. And this is the fundamental naturopathic principle, right? And, and by the way, for those of in your listening audience, you really don't know anything about naturopathy and rightly so <clears throat> in order to become a licensed naturopath in the U S it's four years pre-med four years, naturopathic medical school, at a fully accredited by the United States Department of Education, naturopathic medical school, thousand hours of clinical supervision, then you have to graduate, then you have to pass national boards, then you have to pass state boards, then you have to get a license to practice, then you have to do 25 hours of continuing education. Naturopathic medicine in the United States is full blown primary care medicine. And it may interest people to know that in many states, naturopathic doctors can prescribe drugs. Interesting. You know, it, like you said before, it's it's not the drug; it's how it's used. It's not the gun; it's how it's used. <laughs> thank God for insulin. Yeah. Every every time I'm in the dentist chair, I thank God for lidocaine. For goodness sakes, right? <laughs> right. But it's absolutely correct that in the wonderful world of you know modern American medicine, it's the allopathic reductionistic pharmaceutical method which is everywhere all of the time and. And the pharmaceutical, the, the allopathic method is fantastic for what you and Dave Janda did. Surgery right. when it's necessary. Surgery when it's necessary and trauma care. It's fantastic for that. It's the right dog for that hunt. But for everything else, I mean, honest to God, for, for yeah. most of the conditions that most people go to the doctor for, it's not health care. It's right. disease management. It's disease management. You get right. more dependent on the drugs over time. You get weaker, and then the last 10, 15 years of your life, it's a revolving door to the emergency room. It's horrible. But but I digress. Okay, so what we find in medical nutrition, which is what my profession specializes in, is that there are 90 essential nutrients that the human body needs in order to function the way that nature intended it. 90. 60 minerals, 
16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, and two fatty acids. And these are called essential because the body needs them, but it can't make them. So an essential nutrient has to go down the hatch on a regular basis. You have to feed the body essential nutrients. And lo and behold, lithium is an essential nutrient. So if your body is deficient in lithium, for whatever reason, usually it's because of a poor water supply, or you're eating food that sucks lithium out of the body, you're going to develop a deficiency. <clears throat> and as you develop a deficiency in an essential nutrient, it's only a matter of time until something breaks. So your joints go, or your heart goes, your lungs go, or your kidneys go, or your skin goes, and then you're in trouble. And then you got to go to a medical professional, but the only insurance your medicine pays for is allopathic pharmaceutical yeah. medicine. So you go to somebody and they have no idea that these illnesses are caused by nutrient deficiencies and they just throw a drug at it. Right now, you know, it's better than suffering, but a better step, which is what we advocate is to attempt to fix it. And this is what my profession brings to the table. Science-based, clinically verified therapeutics, the intention of which are to help your body recover its health. And I got to tell you, man, that's, a, that's just a beautiful thing. Well, I, I think that's awesome. And I think there, it, we're going to, I have to ask you some other questions that were specifically, but I do think this is, this is, uh, this is where we should have been all along. And it's interesting. I one time watched my son, who's also a physician, but when he was training, and I honestly, I don't think, I don't even remember in 1976 at the University of Rochester ever having a nutritional lecture. So uh -huh. I shouldn't criticize him too badly, but he had a few hours of nutritional lectures. And the point that he was making, he was showing me on the computer how he could actually, didn't, unless he had a lab, he didn't even go into medical school. He just did it on the computer and he could speed it up, slow it down. He was showing me how actually that was better learning, but he happened to just choose this nutritional lecture that he was getting. And I saw that lecture for about 15 minutes and I said, oh dear God. Uh, and, and he said, okay, mom, I know, I know. I don't eat that way. I just have to pass the test. I mean, it was so wrong. It was like, again, I, I I'm come to believe purposefully wrong. We are being poisoned by big business, big pharma, big, big ag altogether that, um, they're feeding us a bunch of very bad things. So it's a, that's an that's an excellent point. And you know, I, I came to the same realization a number of years ago. And 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 look, you know, <clears throat> medicine is like dogs. There's a lot of different dogs, and they're all good for different things. I mean, if, if you went duck hunting with a chihuahua, <laughs> guaranteed, you're coming back empty handed, right? It's the wrong dog for the hunt. So, you know, there's chiropractic medicine, I think the a good chiropractor is worth their weight in gold. There's acupuncture, Ayurvedic medicine, a botanical medicine, homeopathy, naturopathic medicine, allopathic medicine, all these different types of medicine. And they're really good at certain things. Right. And but I think we confuse, by the way, homeopathy and naturopathy. There, that is a, a big, a big point of confusion and which is made even more confusing by the fact that historically, naturopathy and homeopathy were separate and distinct medical professions. And before the monopolistic takeover of the marketplace orchestrated by the Carnegie's and the Rockefeller's in the early 1900s, there were lots of homeopathic medical schools, the there were more, I believe, homeopathic medical schools than any other type of medical school in the country. But they all went by the wayside. <clears throat> after the Flexner report, right? When Congress granted the American Medical Association exclusive control over who couldn't who couldn't practice medicine. But the point here is that now, in the 21st century, the only place that you can get training, education and clinical experience with homeopathy is at the naturopathic medical schools. Hmm. So naturopathic doctors are taught a little bit of homeopathy. Right, okay. we're taught a little bit of a lot of things, um, all inside of the greater holistic framework. And it's the, the I had a miracle cure with homeopathy when I was a senior at pre med at the University of Massachusetts. It's why I became a naturopathic doctor. Wow! But you know, in a perfect world, all things being equal, there would be equal access to all of these different disciplines. 
and your medical insurance would pay for all of it. And universities would do research on all of it. And it would be a wonderful thing then if we had an even playing field. It's, it's always been remarkable to me that people will get up in arms against, you know, corporate monopolies and, oh, there shouldn't be a communications monopoly and there shouldn't be a financial monopoly and there shouldn't be a food monopoly and, and rightly so. But when it comes to medicine. Oh, it's a huge monopoly and it's. And everybody's okay with it. Well, not everybody. I think we're well, breaking away. I hope so. So, so <laughs> and you're going to help me break away. So, um, I have one. Here's a question that I get all the time. Uh, COVID. COVID people lose hair. A lot of women are complaining that after they survived the COVID, they got over it, whatever we want. To, that's a whole nother discussion, but whatever we want to call it, that syndrome that people get. And hair loss does seem to be a, an issue. Now, I know part of it is just hormonal cycling, that, that we can blame some of it on that. But are there nutritional, is there a nutritional answer for this? Because that's something that, you know, I don't think the Rogaine and all the pharmaceutical stuff is doing very much, to be honest. So, so right. So there's a saying in diagnostic science that when you hear hoofbeats, you think about horses before you think about zebras. Right. right. Now, you've got to have the correct data points in order to be able to put those pieces together. So the first thing to consider when people experience hair loss especially if it's after a physiological stress, is that their body has simply, because of the physiological stress, run out of the nutrients necessary to keep the hair healthy. And the body has a triage system. So if this is how many nutrients the human body needs to make everything run, when it starts running out of things, it's not going to rob nutrients from the heart. It's going to rob nutrients from non-essential tissue in right. order to keep the essential organs alive. So the first thing to consider with hair loss after, especially after a physiological stress, is it's a, a simple, undiagnosed, unrecognized nutrient deficiency syndrome. And this, this uh, brings to light a very important point that only myself and my colleagues are talking about, and this is important. So when most medical doctors start getting their feet wet or experimenting with medical nutrition, they'll use nutrients and vitamins and minerals the same way that they were trained to use drugs. And Linus Pauling was the perfect example. Large doses of vitamin C, intravenous vitamin C, right? That's one nutrient. Right. And there was bang from that. There were positive effects from that, but there were also net negative effects because in the human body, it's all about the balance. So using single nutrients, large doses of single nutrients is referred to in my profession as fractionated nutrition. And it's better than no nutrition. But what's better than fractionated nutrition by a country mile is holistic medical nutrition. So instead of giving the body a boatload of three vitamins, <laughs> you give the body everything that it needs 100% of what it needs and let the body sort it out because this is the fundamental foundation philosophy that naturopathic medicine is based upon. The human body knows how to fix itself. The human body wants to fix itself. The human body is trying to fix itself, but it needs help, right? We need to put on clothes. We need to bathe the body. We need to give the body air. We need to give it water. We need to protect it from the environment. Well, guess what? There's a whole bunch of nutrients that the body also needs, but they're not in the food anymore. Right. And there's a reason for that. And you are exactly correct. And this goes back to what I was trying to communicate a, a minute ago. As I've gone down the road here, right, with, especially with medical nutrition, myself and my colleagues have discovered 12 foods that people shouldn't even look at, let alone eat because these foods are big, bad voodoo daddies, and they have net negative effects over time. And every single one of those foods, not just two, or one or three, all 12 are what people eat all the time. And that could not happen by coincidence. I mm. do believe that all of this was orchestrated a long time ago, that the food that we're eating is making us sick, and that the medicine that we have access to is only meant to manage the problem. And who wins in a situation like that? Pfizer, 
Moderna, right. GlaxoSmithKline, it's nuts. Well, and that's one of the things I think that when I was still practicing orthopedics uh, woke me up to, a couple things woke me up to how bad our system was. One was how long it took to get newly understood physiologic truth into practice. It's like 20 years, I found that out. And so we know something is true today, and it usually takes 20 years to get into practice. Um, and the half-life of truth is about 20 years. In other words, things we believe true today, 50% of them we will know are wrong in 20 years. So when they stand up and tell you, we absolutely know that ivermectin doesn't work or whatever they're trying to tell you, they're probably, just on random chance alone, they're 50% wrong. But the other thing that really woke me up is how many people come in, and, and I was a spine surgeon, so I wasn't seeing them for medical problems. But they would come in, and it was the rare person over 70 who didn't have a string of 20 medications. Yeah. Now, one of the things I'm excited about is going to your kind of nutritional support rather than having my own in my own life, having to take 20 individual bottles of things and put them into a little my, my ritual every three months, put them into these little cases, because I agree with you, it's not it, we, we shouldn't be doing it that way, we should be, we should be doing it more naturally. So What's the, what, what, how do we do it? Well, so you need the right dog for the hunt, right? I mean, if you, and it's a point that's well taken, you know, if you had a problem with a tooth, here's what you would not do. You would not do a, a web search then and buy dental equipment <laughs> and figure out how to fix a cavity and then try to do it yourself. You wouldn't do that. No. You would network for a really good dentist and then go to, go to the really good dentist. So because of the medical monopoly that's been in place since 1912 nobody has any idea what naturopathic medicine is nobody knows how to pronounce it nobody knows what naturopathic doctors do and in a perfect world when people started to see the light and understood and understood that pharmaceuticals can only take you so far and that if you really want to build health you need another strategy well they would go to see a licensed naturopathic doctor because that's our that's what we do we're experts in that we literally literally wrote the books on, on science-based clinically guided medical nutrition but you know because people don't know that we exist they don't but we've we've got your back we've got this dialed in nice a colleague of mine years ago did 25 million was in charge of 25 million dollars of research um, took him 10 years. The resulting book that was published from all this research is in the Smithsonian Institution now. It's a national treasure. And it basically rewrote our understanding of the relationship between nutrients and health. Um, it was a remarkable piece of work, and it really opened up whole new vistas in the wonderful world of medical nutrition. So what it boils down to uh, is that in order for our bodies to work the way that God and nature intended them to, there are 90 nutrients that have to go into down the hatch on a regular basis. 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 aminos, and two essential fats. But the problem is, and here's the, the tragedy, that this was reported to Congress in the 1930s. Minerals represent 66% of the body's nutrient needs, two thirds, things like calcium and sulfur and zinc, right? Body can't make them, body needs them. Plants can't make them, animals can't make them, we need them. The only way that minerals get into the food is if they're in the soil. But the way that big agriculture has taught farmers to grow food depletes the minerals that are there. Now, there weren't enough minerals in the soil anyway, but when they use herbicide and pesticide to grow the food, mono, and, you know, they start cloning the food, right? the amount of minerals that's in the food dramatically goes down, and we knew that in the 1930s. That was reported to Congress in the 1930s, that the amount of minerals in the food is dramatically declining. So as the amount of nutrients, especially minerals, goes down, the amount of chronic disease goes up. And who's that good for? That's good for the pharmaceutical industry, right? So it's, and this is a simple fix. I mean, this isn't flipping rocket science, right? 
I mean, it's just like an automobile. You got to put, you got to put oil in it. You got to put transmission fluid in. You got to put air in the tires. You got to have power steering fluid. You, you know, you, and you need to put the right fuel in the tank. Well, it's right. the same with the human body. So, we need ninety nutrients, <clears throat> and we have figured out a recipe which secures all ninety nutrients, all ninety, not just one or two in mega doses. But here's the very important point: all 90 in the formulations, which are synergistic in effect, and which are easy for the human body to absorb. Yeah, for instance, that's then absorption. that's a gigantic thing. Yeah, it's a yeah. gigantic thing. I'll, I, I told Dave Janda this story, and we still get a chuckle from it every now and then. Years ago, I had a patient who had a porta potty business in Florida. And we were, I was telling him about, the, you know, it's important the type of vitamin that you get because you, you, you either absorb it or you don't. And he said, I understand what you mean. Um, I see that all the time in my porta potty business. I said, what are you talking about? And he said, well, in Florida, the majority of people who live in Florida are elderly. And they all take Centrum Silver. And we oh. dump out the porta potties. And guess what comes out? Centrum oh. Silver's. <laughs> I said, how do you know it's a Centrum Silver and not, you know, a drug? He said, I because you can read Centrum Silver. On so it's tablet. still readable. <laughs> oh my God. So it's a hard pressed tablet with a shellac coating to make it easy to swallow, but it doesn't it doesn't, doesn't get anywhere. Doesn't get anywhere. That's a, this is a really big deal because you know it's not ultimately it's not what you swallow, it's what you absorb. And so for instance, the calcium supplement that I recommend people to take, it's over 90% absorbable. Whereas a over-the-counter calcium supplement at the local health food store would be 15% absorbable if you were lucky. Mm -hmm. And these numbers make a difference. So we put it all together. And oh, by the way, it's available at the medical rebel shop.com. Well, and, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to, to doing this because like I say, I'm, I'm happy now to get rid of multiple pills you know yeah. uh this is this is this started out for me as so many medical things do you know i started out when i didn't like the way i was feeling as i turned 50 i went to the american academy of anti-aging medicine and my mouth dropped open for about three days as i heard things i hadn't heard in medicine before that made that were scientifically based but we didn't learn it because we were being the the truth is being hidden from us and uh and i think it's i think this is where we need to go so this is awesome i i think we're going to talk about specific things um like if you were going to pick one thing to start with you have the 90 minerals or the 90 supplements everybody needs are you also by the way going to tell us what foods we shouldn't eat the 12 i tell you right now but this is going to be the last time that you like me Dr. Okay, I, I'm so afraid you're going to tell me that my homegrown tomatoes aren't good. Oh my god! So this this list with a little um, video which explains why these foods are bad gets into why, because I really one of my strengths and one of the things that I'm dedicated to is educating people. You know, people need to know why, and most doctors don't. They're not. They don't do that, right? So so so. The found the healthy foundation pack, which is a, a three separate nutritional supplements, gives you all 90 essential nutrients. It's called the healthy foundation pack, and it's available at the medical rebel shop.com. Um, the healthy foundation pack, it's a combination of three different nutritional supplements or four, I'm sorry, four different nutritional supplements. They're all liquid. Um, and it's a wonderful thing. If you if you start to take this stuff, even just for one month into your body, switches are going to turn on that have been turned off for a long time because it will ostensibly arguably be the first time in your life that your body's been completely neutrified right and that's a game changer so you know sleep gets better energy gets better mood gets better sex drive gets better a little aches and pains get better things improve why because your body's neutrified and and, you know, again, it's not rocket science. Okay, but here are the 12 bad foods. You ready? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I okay. Be, but I, I'm going to write them down. Okay. <laughs> I'll get the video from you later, but okay, let's hit it. I'll try to get these straight if I can remember them off the top of my head. Here we go. Wheat, barley, rye, and oats. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm okay with that. I already am off that. Okay, so we're I'm big advocates oats, but... of, of gluten-free. Yeah. Because those are the grains that contain gluten. Right. You can eat any other grain that you want. Just don't eat wheat, barley, rye, or oats, please. Number five, oil in a bottle. Sorry. Even avocado oil. If it's, yeah, olive oil, avocado oil, canola oil. Well, that if I oil know a, If it's oil in a bottle, it's got to go because the oil will oxidize um, the longer that it's on the shelf. And if you cook with it on a, on a skillet, or a griddle, it oxidizes almost instantaneously. And when you consume an oxidized oil, you're consuming a nasty little chemical called um, heterocyclic amine, which is not good. No. Um, and it, now, I had and it, been avoiding the, the man-made oils, the, the pressed oils, the agro oils, but I had not been avoiding olive oil and coconut oil. And um, uh, Now, here's the workaround. If you have an avocado. olive bush, a lot of people do, you know, you can pluck the olives off of it, squeeze the oil out of them in a little press and, and eat it immediately. Yeah, fresh, it's okay, but don't and let it, it does not oxidize, but you still can't cook with it. Yeah. But the workaround for that is we're perfectly fine with lard. Oh, yeah, I am too. All I right. use lard and lard and butter. Duck fat, beef fat, goose yep. fat bacon, you know, bacon fat, it's all good. Um, and your food will taste a million times better. Okay, so wheat, barley, rye, and oats, oil in a bottle. Number six, fried food. Fried food will kill you slowly. There was a Harvard guy, his name was Lucien LePage. Um, years ago, he was a statistician. He did a map of the United States, county by county, with life expectancies. And if you look at the map, everybody below the Mason-Dixon line. Yeah, I remember that. Significantly shorter lifespan. <laughs> was like, well, what the heck? Well, everybody below the Mason-Dixon line eats fried food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's a religion in the South. Right. And that's why. So I don't even want people to be downwind of fried food. Um, and that's anything that's cooked in a fry later or anything that's cooked in a skillet with oil. Okay. So the next food on the list is the skins of baked potatoes, yams, or sweet potatoes. Yeah, I'm okay with that one too. Because they also concentrate a nasty chemical that will hurt you if you eat enough of it. The potato itself you can eat. All right. Or if you boil it or steam it, you can eat the skin. But the skins themselves of a baked potato, yam, or sweet potato, it's... Is that the acrylamide problem? That That's may be the it. acrylamide problem. That's the same thing. That's like, yeah. Yep. So I, cause I, I love new, new boiled potatoes, the new ones right out of the garden. So I can yeah. boil them. I can do the yeah. Irish technique, but I just can't fry them. Yeah. Okay. Um, they're really good. If you, if you chop up some parsley. Yep. And put the parsley in with the potatoes, butter. a little butter, salt and pepper. Yep. That's what um, I do. I'm getting hungry right now. All right. So far, I can <laughs> okay. live with this. <laughs> All right. Okay, good. Next food on the list is a carbonated beverage with a meal. Yeah. Because the bubbles will neutralize your stomach acid. And you don't want to neutralize your stomach acid when you're eating. And stomach acid deficiencies, from my point of view, are probably the number one or the number two physiological deficiencies that people have and they just don't know it and by the way heartburn is caused by not enough stomach acid instead right. of too much stomach acid yeah right so it's a kind of a big deal and we could talk at length about that at another time so we don't want to do anything while we're eating to diminish stomach acid and carbonated beverage does that even if it's just perrier yeah. okay next food on the list is uh meat that has nitrates added as preservatives you can eat as much meat as you want as long as it's nitrate free yeah and that goes for your thanksgiving turkey and your your uh saint patrick's day corned beef especially get it nitrate free get your bacon nitrate free right 
Next thing, meat itself, we're good with red meat, but you shouldn't eat it well done. Right. I'm good with because all that. Well done red meat also concentrates heterocyclic amines and will hurt you over time. And this is why you'll see studies that say, oh, you know, there's a statistically significant increase of colon cancer with people that eat meat. Well, no, it's people that either eat fried meat or eat their meat well done. They don't make that distinction in the research. So if you're going to eat red meat, it's rare or medium rare. And the rarer, the better if you can stomach it. Okay, so let me see. So wheat, barley, rye, and oats, oil in a bottle, fried food, uh, baked potatoes, uh, carbonated beverage, uh, nitrates, and uh, meat itself. There's only two more. And this, these two came from the World Health Organization about five years ago. Corn or soy that's been genetically modified and or grown with glyphosate, which is also called Roundup, will, will cause three different types of cancer, death by heart attack and death by stroke. Yeah. So if you're going to eat corn or soy, I'm not a big soy fan for other reasons, but if you're going to eat corn or soy, make sure it's non-GMO and organic. Um, and I'd like to add another one to the list, bringing it to 13, which is kind of similar. So it's a little bit of a cheat, but it would be high fructose corn syrup. Oh, yeah. Which is in everything. Yeah, I'm surprised that isn't on their list. That's uh, yeah. I've had kind of taken with... kind of taken care of with the corn thing, but not really. Yeah, I've actually had people that have had uh, actual, uh, huge workups by gastroenterologists and liver biopsies and everything because they had chronically elevated liver enzymes and and then you can you ask them about their diet and they're they're drinking all this uh pepsi or something with high fructose corn syrup get them off that and the thing clears up so amazing it's amazing and um you know honestly i'm doing pretty good on this now the only the only problem i would have with the fried foods i'm just gonna say would be i um i like chinese cooking my my son is an excellent chef and he likes to cook chinese from an old girlfriend and uh, like like bok choy, sautéed rapidly in the in the skillet, but that's still considered fried foods. Or is that are we talking about? Are we talking about chitlins and and? No, no, no. That's still considered fried food. And also understand, you know, this is like, um, uh, uh, you know, the tar that's in cigarettes and asbestos. This is not like strychnine that a little bit of it you're going to die from it immediately this is accumulating amounts of it. So, you know, you're going to have right. Chinese food once every three months. I, I'm okay with that. As long as your body's replete with the nutrients it needs. Right. But it's a, uh, it, but most people, you think about it. I mean, every time I travel, I'm horrified because I go to the food court in the airport and 99.9% .9 yeah. of everything that everybody's eating is killing them slowly, and they have no idea. Right. I'm horrified by it. So it's the quantity that's the thing, right? right. It's, it's a slow death over time, like the straws that broke the camel's back. One of my favorite, I have a picture of it somewhere, but one of my favorite things was going in, I happened to see the, um, I don't remember what, what gas station it was, but they made a big deal about how you wouldn't give your car bad quality you know you wouldn't eat bad quality you wouldn't eat poison you wouldn't give your car bad quality fuel and then you leave the you know you, you you put the pump and then you go in to pay or whatever and it's just filled with bad quality food for you so they're taking care of your car not you well my my people are destroyed by lack of knowledge and again it goes back to the medical monopoly so i mean and by the way these things are academic i mean some people try to argue them but they always fail but why isn't this information? Why doesn't everybody know this? Why doesn't everybody know that you need 90 essential nutrients? Why doesn't everybody know that these foods are bad for you? Why? Why? Well, it's because of the monopoly. And I have to tell you something, Dr. Merritt, this monopoly is so complete that most people don't even know that it's a monopoly. Oh, I know. I mean, this and is where the term alternative came from. Right. They don't they don't really understand why they're not getting the truth now.
and and I've I've now now my my podcast group knows this, but you know the pharmaceutical companies are the biggest funder of Congress. They're the biggest funder of the FDA. Their patents fund the CDC. They fund politics at all levels, and they they're the biggest funding of the media. And uh, you know, there's just no question that that's what they and and the AMA is just owned by these owned by them. So. The AMA, people think the AMA represents doctors. It only represents 13% of doctors in private practice or in practice. But they've taken care of that because they've rounded us all up into hospitals now. But yeah, you're right. It's, it's, uh, it's actually horrible. And um, it needs to change. We need the, the right. if, we, if we had had a free medical market in this country three years ago, all of this coronavirus misdirection, propagandized nonsense. Would never have happened. Would never have happened. First of all, doctors would be willing to stand up and speak the truth, but they're being cowed because they all work for hospitals now and they'll lose their employment. Um, right. You know, I can speak to that. So, yeah, you're right. It would not have happened. But 2022 is a year that we take our world back and we take our medical freedom back. And so that's why I have asked you to be on, because I think this is my first step, not my first step, but my first step to open up the, this to my clients, to my friends, to the people that listen to me, to get off this plantation that the pharmaceutical companies, and I, it's really pharma egg, what pharma egg has brought us. So it's not just, I mean, that's why I, I'm glad you took the time to talk to us about the food, because it's not, it's pharmaceutical, com, it's pharmaceutical agents that we've been put down our throat instead of good quality food and the nutritional supplements that we needed in the right manner. You know, it's from my point of view, it's, it's very ironic because when you, I mean, you just step back and think about it. The human body is so smart. It grew itself all by itself from a single cell. And right now our bodies are managing millions of biochemical interactions, all of which are outside of our conscious control. This speaks to the inborn intelligence running the show of the human body. And this is what every system of holistic medicine understands, right? That the human body wants to fix itself. So the chiropractors support it in this way, and the acupuncturists support it in this way, and the homeopaths support it in this way, and the naturopaths support it in this way. And all of these are important ways that people need to understand. I mean, every time I hear the term alternative, I cringe because it's pejorative. It's like yeah. saying that what myself and my colleagues do is alternative is like saying, well, the only real dog is a German shepherd and every other dog is an alternative dog, right? right? right. We wouldn't stand for that culturally, but that's exactly what we've been socialized to get in medicine. And I'm, I'm really, I'm really, uh, what's the right word? Um, encouraged um, that you and Dave Janda and other people are finally standing up and speaking out about this and just educating people. Look, there are alternatives here. There are things that you can do outside of conventional medicine. And you just, you've been lied to about it for right. most of your life. Well, I, you know, Dave Janda and I being orthopedic surgeons, when he told me that he had been on your basic pack now for uh, you know over a month. I mean, he's been on long term now, but that he's an orthopedic surgeon and couldn't solve his own joint pain until he <laughs> repleted his nutrition. Now that means something. And and my own experience, uh, just going to the A4M and learning about anti aging medicine and that different look at the whole thing. Again, you know, um, I started, I started realizing in my, and this is a little orthopedic story, but I started realizing in my spine clinic when these women would come in and they would say they were there for back pain, but they would say, oh, my, my joints all hurt too, actually, because I'd say, does any other joint hurt? Well, yeah, they kind of all hurt. Now, my new question started being, okay, when did you go off, off your postmenopausal hormones? Because it turns out that, you know, lack of progesterone gives you joint pain also. So there's so many things that modern medicine doesn't do for you. Because as you say, they're just reactionary, not not proactive. And uh, there's a there's a meme that I have that shows this uh, uh, guy's with a bunch of stuff stuffed in his mouth. And it says, 
the pharmaceutical companies don't make money if you're dead and they don't make money if you're well. It's that in-between sweet spot where they make money. And that's where we are in this whole thing. Yeah, well, 100 percent. We've been, you know, we've been boondoggled hook, line and sinker. And, you know, again, it's not the drug, it's how it's used. Thank God for uh, general anesthesia. Thank God for the sterile technique. Thank God for surgery when it's necessary. Fantastic stuff. But also we need to bring the other systems of licensed and regulated science-based clinically verified systems of medicine. Everybody needs to have a say in this. It needs to be a free medical market. And that's what's desperately needed here. And education, right? Education is the way to go. You know, I really, I really hope that 2022 is a year where things turn around. I really do because, because the, you know, number one, the truth has a ring to it. Yep. And once you've experienced the truth, you're in its velvet grass forever. And number two, lies also have a ring to them. Yeah. And I think more and more people are waking up now to the just the unbelievable misdirection that's been promulgated here on behalf of Big Pharma. Oh, yeah. I, I like Boris Yeltsin once said, when you know, remember when he was he was being uh, held kind of they had tanks and everything pointed at him and he's standing out there on the front of the Russian White House. And he, he said in Russian that, you know, you you can you can sit on the throne of bayonets, but you can't sit on it for long. And I think the lies are starting to come down about so many things, which is probably why COVID is now, because as people are waking up, this whole pharmaceutical industry is looking around saying, oh, we're about to go down. You know, we're about to have our, our rice bowl crushed. So you I know think what's another thing. I think so. I think so. And here's a, here's a interesting data point I just became aware of a couple of weeks ago. Worldwide, people spend just as much money on nutritional supplements as they do on drugs. It's neck and neck. And the pharmaceutical industry knows this. Mm -hmm. And this is why, you know, you have direct to consumer ads on the TV all of the time, because they're pushing, 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 because they know it's neck and neck. And then, you know, every once in a while, like Dick Durbin in Illinois, right, he'll, he'll try to like sponsor a bill that regulates nutritional supplement sales. It's like, it's nonsense. Right. And that's, they they keep trying, and they're probably going to continue to try. I think one of the problems that, that the average consumer has is that, and I've had this, I, I actually was going to write a book about this, about how you deal with supplements, because it's, you know, it's hard. People can spend a lot. They can spend all that money and they cannot get the benefit from them. You know, well, that's the other side of the coin. And you're and that happens right. a lot. And that's why my profession right. is desperately needed. Right. And that's and that's why I'm reaching out to you, because I don't want that. Now, I have a couple of things I love on my site, like carbon 60. It's it's it is natural in the sense that it, it, this is a in fact, that's my background today. The buckyball of carbon. Uh, you know, it, it exists in shungite in Russia, but it's not something that's generally in any kind of food, but it's an autoimmune, I mean, it's an anti-immune, antioxidant that like no other. So it's a really, really wonderful chemical. Not all chemicals are bad, but we need to figure out what we need to spend our money on. Nobody's Nobody's infinitely rich. And so we have to, well, some are, but not most of us. So we have to determine what's the most bang for our buck. And I think, obviously, you want to get things that are absorbed, and you want to get things that, I'm, I'm, I, again, I don't like to have 20 bottles, and I don't think most people do. There's no point in replacing your, or some lack of benefit from replacing all these other, you know, your, your, you know all the all the pharmaceutical 20 bottles with these 20 bottles of pills otherwise so we want to get so a better the, way to what's do the it. difference right but and you know it's um it's a point that's well taken because the nutritional supplement industry is you know it's a mercantile industry and people are there to make profit and uh I, there's a guy that i went to school with before he became a naturopath he was a pharmacist and when he graduated naturopathic school, this was way back in the early 80s, um, he looked around at the nutritional supplement industry, and he was horrified at the lack of regulation that was there. 
So he started a nutritional supplement company, the intention of which was to raise the bar on quality control. And I was having lunch with him once um, the years ago. And, you know, I kind of sat him down and I said, you know, I, I get what you're saying about quality control, but what does that mean pragmatically? He said, well, since we instituted a high level of quality control and we check every batch of raw materials instead of doing skip lot testing, where, you know, most companies test every third or fourth batch, since we started testing every batch of raw material, we send back 20% because it's contaminated or it's grade C instead of grade A or it's mislabeled. You know, it's not vitamin C, it's vitamin D. A big 25 kilogram, wow. it's the wrong stuff or it's, you know, it's got mice feces in it or whatever. He said, we send it back. Now he said, do you think that the, the manufacturer throws it out? He said, no, they're gonna sell it to somebody else. So, you know, it's nutritional supplement companies are not not all the same. They're not all the same. And this right. is, I will ring my own bell here for a minute. The, the supplements that I recommend my patients take and people in the general public, the reason that I recommend these instead of anything else is because of 33 years of clinical experience. And that, that makes a gigantic difference. So my recommendations stand and they're based on clinical results rather than you know, nutritional supplement company propaganda. And that's right. a big deal. Well, excellent. Well, I really appreciate you coming on. And uh, I hope you come back again with some updates or thanks, Dr. Merritt, I'm at your yeah. disposal, the there's a million things to learn here. Absolutely. And, and for your listening audience to understand and you know, I'm at your disposal. And I, I well, that would be great. Maybe we can take a, a particular topic next time and that you think is important for people to understand. And, um, and I'm also going to have a bright uh, TV s slot here on Wednesday evening. So maybe we can do that too. That would be maybe excellent. Whatever works for you works for me. I'm, I will, I will yeah. stand up on anybody's hill and wave my flag <laughs> as often as I can. Because I will tell you one thing to end with. And you know, I, I don't want to sound too uh, pedantic, but most people wouldn't believe the amount of suffering that conventional medicine generates in human beings. Most of it is completely unnecessary. And it's all because people only have access to one type of medicine. They don't right. know about this other stuff. And it's a tragedy because often we don't, the nature paths don't have the, you know, the secret decoder ring to all things medical and the cure for everything. We don't, but what we do have and what we do bring to the table is a very sophisticated health recovery paradigm that's right. science-based and clinically verified. And it's often really pretty easy to implement. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward. That's what we need. That's what we need. Everybody understand it. Thank you so much. Thanks, and we'll have you back again. Thanks. Looking for a place for the whole family? Come down to the Toucan Mall in Amelia's Ward, Linden. It's the mall that has it all. We have great food, a relaxing atmosphere, and activities for all ages. Tennis, swimming, and a playground. But the fun doesn't stop after dark. There's even a bar and an arcade. And if you aren't ready to go home yet, We've even got a spacious room for your comfort, complete with air conditioning, Wi-Fi, and a private bathroom. The Toucan Mall can also facilitate your event in our spacious conference hall. We also have a theater with films for the entire family. It's the Toucan Mall located in Amelia's Ward, Linden.